Hello Year 10. Today's lesson is on a brief history of pop and rock music from the 1940s to the present day. Although you won't be asked this specifically in the GCSE exam, um, it is important for us to understand the cultural uh, developments which influenced the music throughout the 20th century, as this has an impact on the music that we enjoy and create today. But what do we mean by the word popular music? Popular or pop music has many subgenres, which we will look at later on. But the, the word popular basically means it has mass appeal and lots of people like listening to it. The Victorian era is the start of the popular music journey. Although it's not pop music as we know it today, it is the start of this idea of mass appeal. Before the Victorian times, only the wealthy upper class could access music and musical entertainment. By the Victorian times, music had become more accessible and more affordable to go and see to more people, um, to the working class. Music halls became very popular entertainment and usually contained singers and comedians this started in small pubs and grew uh, in, in popularity and started to take over larger theatres. By the time we get to World War I, um, it's very popular. However, the theatres decide to rebrand after World War I into variety acts. With the rise and the impopularity with jazz and swing music in the 1930s, the music hall starts to lose its mass appeal. The 1930s and 1940s saw the start of the music industry as we know it today. Developments in technology, such as being able to record music live and then put them on vinyl records and to be able to play those on record players, meant that music was now accessible to more people. People wanted to buy records, people wanted to play them on new record players and to share music with other people. The other invention that was very important at this time was the microphone. This helped singers in particular create a particular style called crooning. This was very popular in America at this time um, and was mainly male singers who sang sentimental love songs in a low, soft voice. Crooners included Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Nat King Cole, to uh, Tony Bennett and Dean Martin. And this particularly appealed to housewives. Also at this time, big bands, jazz and swing music were very popular. Have a listen to In the Mood by Glenn Miller and Sing 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 by Benny Goodman to get a flavour of this genre. The 1950s saw the rise in rock and roll. This is the beginning of pop music as we know it today and it was the first genre of music to be specifically targeted at teenagers. It was new, it was exciting, it was more upbeat than the crooners had sounded in the previous decade. However, many parents, especially of white teenagers, believed it was a bad influence for a number of reasons. One reason, bearing in mind um, segregation was still happening in the USA at this time, was that rock and roll was influenced by music of black Americans, such as the blues and R&B. Another reason why it was frowned upon was because of what the parents believe were vulgar hip movements by the performers. If you have a look at Elvis um, performing live, he uses many large hip movements during his performances and these were seen as too provocative for teenage girls to watch. If you have a look at the hound dog clip that I've put down at the bottom, you'll notice that Elvis has only been filmed from the waist up. This is because the TV uh, network had so many complaints previously about the vulgar performances that Elvis had done before. Nevertheless, rock and roll still became very popular at this time. Famous rock and roll musicians include Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Chuck Berry and Little Richard. 
Have a listen to some of their music and see what the style sounds like. A tremendous amount of cultural and social change happened in the 1960s, which influenced both music and fashion. Rock music was born, and it was UK bands that mainly dominated the charts. Bands such as The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, The Who, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin and Black Sabbath. Changes in technology also helped to expand music's popularity at this time. LP records were invented. These were vinyl records that you could fit more songs onto. Also, radio broadcasting expanded at this time. However, the BBC did not play pop or rock music. This saw pirate radio stations establishing around the UK, mainly on boats offshore. This was not illegal because they were broadcasting in international waters. In 1964, the first pirate radio station called Radio Caroline was established. However, by 1967, the BBC decided to restructure and they established Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3 and Radio 4 as we know it today. In the USA, the cultural change happened as well with the rise of the hippie movement. Folk and country music um, and folk and country rock were very popular with musicians such as Bob Dylan and Joni Mitchell. Surf rock and the Beach Boys became popular um, and also Motown became popular with the rise of Jackson 5, The Supremes and Stevie Wonder. In the 1970s and 1980s the pop industry expands rapidly with many subgenres of pop and rock happening during this time. Bands such as Pink Floyd start to experiment more um, and progressive or prog rock is established. Punk rock also happens at this time and it was in rebellion towards progressive rock. They wanted to keep everything nice and simple. In the 1970s in particular glam rock was popular and this is where performers dress up in flamboyant costumes and makeup. For example David Bowie and Elton John and ABBA. Heavy rock also happened during this time and guitar riffs and guitar solos are a big influence in this. Pop rock also exists and people like Madonna are part of this subgenre. By the 1990s the music industry is enormous with many record labels deciding to manufacture girl bands and boy bands such as the Backstreet Boys, Westlife, Take That, Spice Girls and Destiny's Child. With the record labels having a big influence over the music that is created, musical freedom is much less during this time as it is more about what will sell more than the musicality itself. TV shows such as Pop Idol and X Factor become popular during this time and as well as boy bands and girl bands, solo artists become superstars, such as Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera. However, many of the artists that we mentioned before, from the 1960s onwards, are still around and still have a following from when they began. By 1994, Britpop was popular in the UK. This included bands such as Oasis, Blur and Pulp, who took inspiration from bands in the 1960s. This subgenre is not very heavy in sound at all, um, but in contrast, in the USA, grunge is popular. This is a much heavier rock style with the use of a distorted guitar. One grunge band that you may have heard of is Nirvana. Also in the USA at this time, punk rock is uh, gaining popularity again with bands such as Green Day. Finally, here is a list of the genres mentioned previously with their definitions. Please listen to some of the music mentioned, 
so you can have a listen to some of the similarities and differences between all the genres. If you have any questions, please email me and I will do my best to support you.